Kamen Rider 01, issue number 3 from Titan Comics. So yeah, I've been reading this series, I just haven't put up a review. I don't know why, I actually should have done one when issue 1 came out. But I'm doing it now, especially since, in my opinion, there haven't really been any good comic books released this week. So here we go, Kamen Rider 01. It's based off of the uh, TV series Kamen Rider 01. This is a, um, oh, what's it called, a supplemental piece. I believe this takes place during arc one, uh, the first arc, someplace maybe in the middle of the first arc, uh, because at this point in time, Fuwa and Yaba, who work for Ames, are already aware that Aruto is a common writer. So this is pretty early on. So I guess just to catch everybody up. So in this world, our main character is Aruto. He's a failed comedian who ends up becoming the CEO of the Heaton Intelligence Corporation, which is a corporation that his grandfather passed to him upon his death. And this corporation creates human gears. And human gears are basically uh, androids. They're humanoid AI companions that are basically used for uh, like work labor and stuff like that. They look exactly like humans, except they have these, well, it kind of looks like earmuffs in a sense, <laughs> like, like sci-fi earmuffs. So there's that. In this world, there is a branch of human gears called mesubojinrai.net. I probably completely butchered that, and if I did, my apologies. <laughs> I'm not good at pronouncing Japanese phrases or names. To be honest, I'm not really good when it comes to English ones either. <laughs> but um, their goal is basically, they, they act towards the will of the Ark. So whatever the Ark tells them is kind of what they do. And the Ark is this giant satellite. I'm not going to go too much into details about it, but initially it was like an experimental satellite that was made to assist this town called Daybreak Town. And there's this huge Daybreak Town disaster where like every, like almost everyone that lived in that town was killed off. And the satellite kind of went haywire. And now the satellite basically wants to bring about the extinctions of all humans by hacking into human gears and transforming into them into uh, Magia, which are kind of like the, the main villains in this series. So they're um, human gears who get turned into like these monstrous creatures. And Aruto, as the CEO of Eden Corporation, he has access to a Kamen Rider suit called Kamen Rider 01, and it is his goal to protect the dreams of others at any cost. So that's kind of like the, just the basic gist of the TV series. And in this comic book series, we sort of very, very early on in the series, like the first few episodes or so, and um, Arto has kind of recently become the CEO. He is a Kamen Rider. He has been the Kamen Rider for a little while at this point in time. Like I said before, Fua and Yaba are aware that he is the common writer. And there is this villain called Ragnarok. And Ragnarok is basically a villainous common writer who doesn't have a human, I don't want to say host. It doesn't have a human like controlling it. Because in, in this world, uh, common writers, they're, they're humans who have the abilities to uh, transform or henshin into common writers. In this comic book series, Ragnarok is some kind of a machine. And um, he kicked the crap out of Aruto in the first issue. In the second issue, Aruto was kind of able to stop him, in a sense. He was able to, like, freeze him. and um, But they're not aware if he's, like, completely destroyed or not. We start off with a huge explosion. Aruto is in his Kamen Rider suits, And he is with Izu. Izu is Aruto's companion she is a human gear she's in the tv series she has like an awesome character arc and stuff i for anyone who hasn't watched the series i do recommend go and check it out i'm not sponsored by them in any way but if you go to tubi you can watch the entire series for free for anyone who's not aware of like what tubi is tubi is basically netflix but for free you just have to watch ads but um if you have something called adblock and you watch it on your computer you don't need to worry about that but you can watch the entire Kamen Rider 01 for free. I highly recommend checking it out. Great series. I really enjoyed it. Aruto is like a, an interesting main character. Like, I, I liked him a lot. Uh, but back to the comic. Have a huge explosion. Kamen Rider is there with Izu. He gets his uh, 
rising hopper cycle, they make their way out of the building as there's like explosions going off. And uh, yeah, they, we have like just like a cool moment where he rides off the building, he crashes onto the rooftop of another nearby building, and uh, they're able to get out in one piece. And all of the people that work for Hedon are able to escape as well. So there's no casualties, just a lot of property damage. And of course, Fua and Yaba show up and they're pissed off at Aruto. They don't think that he's worthy of being a common rider. Fua straight up says, you're the living embodiment of a liability. And they're like, you know, you guys take your job seriously. And then that's when we have Aruto talking to the vice president of Hedon Intelligence and uh, basically saying that you might be removed from your position as CEO. There's been a lot of media coverage over the past week's explosions. Uh, the stark market value has gone down. Investor confidence has gone down. So yeah, he might lose his job as a CEO. Here's the problem with this series. The fact that it takes place so early on in the, uh, the show's continuity, it kind of... Like this threat of him losing his position, position kind of rings hollow because we know for a fact he's not going to lose his position until later on in the story because uh, it doesn't happen early in the series. So I guess a little bit of a spoiler alert. He, it happens later on. So there really are no like stakes here. Like at no point in time am I worried for Aruto, am I worried for Fuwa or Yaba or Izu. I'm not worried about this Ragnarok character destroying the world. I'm not worried about this threat of him possibly losing his position because I already know none of that stuff is going to happen because it it doesn't happen in the TV series. Because it takes place way too early into the series, there's no stakes, really. There's nothing to really worry about because you know exactly where it's going to end up going because that, whatever happens in this comic book, at some point in time, it's going to have to go back to the status quo to fit in with the rest of the continuity of the TV series. So... Maybe they should have just had this series take uh, place after the TV series happens. And um, then the stakes can actually be raised a little bit. So yeah, they tell him about how he might possibly lose his position. And Aruto's like, you know, I'm sorry, grandfather. You know, I can always go back to my previous original career. And the CEO's like, please don't. And that's when Aruto starts one of his puns. Uh... In this one, it's, I don't get why bakers aren't wealthier. Why? Because they make so much dough. And then he does his little pose, which they captured perfectly here. I will say that I'm a little bit disappointed that they don't actually have his catchphrase followed after that. In the TV series, one of the running gags is Aruto is constantly making puns. And um, as he's doing the puns, he gets like super emotional about it. Like he, for anyone who watches Naruto, you guys know how Jiraiya, like whenever he makes his introduction, he does like a weird kabuki dance kind of sit, kind of thing. Naruto kind of does that. He, he he does like a little dance or he does a little twirl or he like moves his body and he always screams out like his jokes and stuff like that. And then what he does is he does this pose that you see here where he kind of bends his body and he has his finger out. So he tells his joke and then he says his catchphrase afterwards which is always different depending on the translation you get the one that i saw the translation was now that's a show by aruto um, but another translation I, i've seen goes with um and that's how you know it's aruto it all kind of depends but basically he has a catchphrase and he repeats it all the time so the running gag is he comes up with a pun he does a little dance in his pose and as he's doing his little pose with his finger out he goes, catchphrase. So for this, I'm just going to say, now that's a show by Aruto when he does his little finger point. And they don't have that here. They just have him doing uh, the joke and then the pose, but they don't have the catchphrase to follow up with it. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and this panel here is actually, I think I want to say it's uh, a direct reference to episode two. I think it's episode two. It's his shine joke. He does like a, a shine joke, a shine pun. And... Um, as he's doing the pun, we see Fuwa clenching his fists. And um, this shot right here looks exactly like a shot from that episode. That's another running gag, which I don't know if I've actually seen it really happening in this uh, series so far. 
uh, one of the running gags is every time when Aruto does his pun and then he does his little finger point, Fua always try. Fua wants to laugh because he he's like a huge fan of puns, but he doesn't want anyone to know that he's a fan of puns because he feels like people won't take him seriously. So every time Aruto, I almost want to say Naruto. Every time Aruto does a, a punny joke, Fua basically tries to hold in his laughter and the comic comes from like just his over the top facial expressions as he's trying to hold in his laugh um we don't really get to see much of that in this series so far yeah back to the 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 comic they eventually go to mount fuji where they uh find this like secret computer lab in the middle of the forest and they go inside and they realize that this computer lab um, is the uh, apocalypse reboot system and it was basically like a, a termination protocol where um, after the reboot of the Zia satellites, termination protocols were activated. And it was basically a cleansing system uh, produced by Black Rider who would ensure no abnormal or defective riders will remain after an extinction level event. So in case um, any like riders go crazy or like writers have too much power so in case something happened to the writers there's some abnormal or defective writers out there this sequence would create ragnarok and ragnarok would be sent out to go wipe out the writers and so that's why ragnarok is going around trying to destroy the writers only uh here it, it turns out that it was all a trick ragnarok basically faked his death or he faked his loss, like he purposely lost to Aruto, so that Aruto would take him into this lab um, because he wasn't able to get into the lab himself. But Aruto has the um, clearance to get into the lab. So with Aruto going into the lab and carrying a sample of Ragnarok with him, Ragnarok is able to free himself, reform. Now he's inside uh, the lab that he wants to get in, and he wants to get this thing called the thousand key it's the ultimate uh progress key uh progress keys are basically their um they're almost kind of like usbs in a sense they're they're basically data activation keys and they're used by common writers and that's how common writers are able to transform and take on different forms and stuff like that it's basically very powerful uh they're um most of them have like combat data within them and um he this is like the ultimate one so it'll make him so much more stronger and he ha- will basically no longer be controlled by the arc the arc will no longer have power over him he'll have achieved full sentience and now he can go about killing the comet riders not because of some kind of like weird system glitch or anything but because he wants to so the weird system glitch comes from the fact that there was some kind of um like sunspot or whatever there's like an explosion out in the universe and it kind of messed with the satellites and the satellites were rebooting and as they were rebooting the rebootment kind of gave the same effect of um extinction level events so the satellite was basically tricked into believing that there was an extinction level event even though there wasn't and that's why ragnarok was being released i know me explaining all this might be kind of like a little bit hard to fully understand and I know part of that is just the way I talk because uh, I, I don't script any of my stuff. I just kind of speak off the cuff. So I know my rambling and kind of jumping off from one topic to the other isn't really helping. It makes a lot more sense if you watch the show. So I guess that's another thing where if you're reading this series and you've never watched the um, the, the TV series, if you're just reading the comic book series and haven't watched the TV series, you might be... a a bit lost like the series tries to do its best to explain everything that's going on but there are still some things where it's kind of like i don't know what exactly you're 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 talking about like what what exactly is going on here like what's this like what's this daybreak town event and all this stuff that's mentioned multiple times in this series and also just the fact that it doesn't show arto gaining his powers and then and stuff like that like we're already kind of thrust in so the series is pretty much assuming that you've watched the series already i would recommend watching the series at least watch the first arc and you should be able to catch up on this because like i said this takes place around i won't say the middle of the first arc so just watch the first arc and um you should be pretty much 
caught up with what's going on in this comic or at least understand the references that they're making. But I guess that's a point that I want to make is that uh, if you haven't watched a TV series, you might be lost on this or at least you can't fully enjoy it. So watch the TV series or at least watch the first arc and then read this. Um, I, I have really enjoyed it. I think the artwork is good, like especially for a Kamen Rider series. I thought that maybe they would... I don't know. I, I don't know how popular Kamen Rider is in America, especially... I mean, Kamen Rider Zero One came out years ago. When did it come out? It came out before COVID or like during COVID, during the lockdowns, because I think the lockdowns actually kind of messed up with the uh, the production for the series. Like they had to cut out a bunch of stuff because of, of protocols and things like that. So it's a few years old. So I wasn't expecting, you know, all that great of artwork, but the artwork's surprisingly good. I like the story. It seems to be pretty faithful to the, the universe and the characters so far. Like at this point in time, there's nothing like out of character or um, I guess one thing that people might be worried about when it comes to Western adaptations, uh, especially Western adaptations of Japanese products. I, I know like at least if you are on social media, you'll see a lot of stuff where uh, American translators will just completely butcher uh, like anime and stuff like that and manga uh, to some extent to kind of put in their own like political agendas and stuff like that. There's none of that here, at least not that I've seen so far. So if you're like worried about that, don't. I mean, if it happens, I'll, I'll make sure to bring it up. But I'm 30 issues in, I'm all cut up, and there's none of that kind of stuff here. So this is actually a pretty faithful adaptation. It's telling its own story within this already created universe, but it's being pretty faithful to the characters and the universe in general. It's not like bastardizing it in any way. So yeah, I guess if you're a fan of Kamen Rider, if you're a fan of Kamen Rider, especially Kamen Rider Zero One, go read the comics. It's actually pretty damn good. So there you go. I'm kind of just rambling at this point. So it's Kamen Rider Zero One, issue number three from Titan Comics. I enjoyed it a lot. It's actually a really good Tokusatsu series, which uh, anyone who's somewhat familiar with this channel knows I'm big on Tokusatsu. So if you're reading like Radiant Black and stuff like that, and you're like, man, like I like the genre, but I kind of want something a little bit better when it comes to storytelling. Here you go. Here's here's a good uh, tokusatsu series. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.